Nice clap. Take us in, Jackson. This, oh, Jackson wants to do it. Okay. No, I, no, I heard you warming up. I was giving you the space that you no, need it's too late to now. do an intro. No, I'm not doing it until you, you do it. You faked you out. Nope. It was a test right. to see if you're jumping, Jackson. Go. Uh, hey, everyone. Welcome to episode 231, 221 uh, of the official podcast. This week, we're very happy because we've just uncovered news that the Elden Ring is actually a game that exists. It's actually coming out, boys. Can you believe yeah. it? Well, it's pretty trailer, if you want to yeah if you want to mention that they leaked the i don't know 300 pixel by 200 pixel trailer that somebody recorded in their office not very smart about hiding their identity by the way you can see what monitor it is you can see some items in the back so i feel like that person's gonna get in trouble now i'm sure they can somehow find a way to pin i it bet on it was and, george and r turn. martin himself there's probably He's, no liability there because it could have been someone else filming that person's stuff Without their permission. Well, uh, Charlie, uh, you know, knowing George R.R. R. Martin, he must have bolted out of the fucking studio 10 minutes into the project. Like, oh, you guys finish it. It'll be fine. You can use my name. That's good enough. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. So have you guys He's watched the contract? Uh, it seems like we've all Sorry, watched the, the it, right? Yeah. 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 So it's, it's basically know, just Dark Souls say. 4, right? It's exciting. Uh, I, yeah, I that's think... what I was going to say. And I thought I, I might get some pushback and eat shit from you guys. But how do you guys even tell these from software games apart? They all look the fucking same, especially in low quality trailers like that. Low yeah, quality, I, I mean, potato I'm quality. Still, I'm still excited, but I mean, the horse gameplay didn't look very cool. Other than that, though, I, I mean, it's my favorite genre, so I'm looking forward to it. What exactly were you guys expecting from it, though? Of course, it's still going to be a Souls-like game. That's what they're known for. Yeah, but Bloodborne and uh, Sekiro were such, like, different oh, atmosphere unique, and feels, yeah, whereas this settings. literally yeah. just looks like Dark Souls 4. Yeah, I get you. Yeah. I so mean, I, ex uh, I expected more kind of like, I don't know, with Elden Ring, I, I guess I got the impression they were going kind of more Lord of the Rings, more traditional fantasy, but I guess not. So it's kind still, of, we saw we saw like six seconds. This it still could be pretty. It just, but uh, it looks exactly fantasy. like Dark Souls, like almost one to one. Well, because of the skeleton being slammed in the dragon. That's all I can think of. Hmm. I guess. <laughs> I, mean, I, I tried to think of reasons to defend it, Jackson, because yeah, it does look like every other From Software game. It just looks like a <laughs> like a DLC or something. Like sort of content, I, I just I don't necessarily guys. think it has to be all too different from a Dark Souls game, really. It's not that it's a bad thing. I mean, from software games are very good and Dark Souls is very good, but it's just a little little bit of a letdown that it's like, oh, a big new project with George R. R. Martin? What is it? More Dark Souls. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright. And I said, fuck yeah. Oh, I'm I'm also excited. It's just a little part of me is a little like, eh, underwhelmed. Which so they did said something it, different. They've well, they are doing something different. Apparently, it is completely open world. So oh. that's that's something. Didn't and that. I I assume since George is working on it, there's, I mean, <laughs> hopefully well, going to well, be some kind of narrative there, some kind of story. But wait a minute, wasn't not. isn't Dark Souls technically open world? You can go. I was where, thinking the exact same thing. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much open world. You can go any direction and any path that you want from the very beginning. Well, then I, I don't know why they specify that it's a new type of open world game for them. Maybe they mean there's uh, towers that you have to climb to unfog uh, parts of the map or something like that. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, it could be. They, they do specify that it's new for them, like that they've made innovations in terms of the open world <laughs> capabilities of the game. Imagine so, to be they, fair, uh, everyone says that, though. Yeah. Imagine if they just made a Far Cry Ubisoft copy and paste, climb the towers to unveil the map type game, and they were super excited about it. Pretty fucking cool. <laughs> hmm. Not well, I hope it turns out as you guys want it. That's so sweet, Kaya. Thank you. Thank you for your well wishes on the project. <laughs> it's not gonna do jack shit, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it means something to me. Will. <laughs> the people at From Software I mean, hear, hear Kaya's calls and uh, they'll oh, work double hard yeah. now to make yeah. a... I product. hope that George R.R. R. Martin didn't bolt out for the last 10% of it and I hope we're not going to see another change.org petition to re-release the game with a better ending. 
Kyle, what would you do if you played Elden Ring and you beat the whole game and you were watching the credits, you were streaming it, so you were talking to your chat, and all of a sudden you saw special thanks, Kaya Orson? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that that's a lot of assumptions. First, the assumption that I'd play that thing, and second, that I'd sit through the credits instead of alt f right <laughs> out of your, it, your whole ejecting stream chat, myself. Your whole stream chat, every one of them is just like, Kaya, play Elden Ring. Trust me, it's worth it. Trust me. So you, you finally go, fine, okay, guys. We'll give it a shot. Okay, thank you for donating $50 so I could buy it. Thank you. Let's go ahead and try it. And then you just see, thank special thanks, Kaya Orson. Without this, this game wouldn't be possible. I, thank him. I fucking wish they did that. Donate $50. They just fucking demand I play shitty games to torture me. <laughs> the second they told me to play Elden Ring, that's how I would know that it's a shitty fucking game. I played Ori, a game that I actually love. The only game whose credits I actually sat through because I admired it so much. My viewership like plummeted during that week <laughs> because nobody was interested in me actually enjoying a game. <laughs> it's bad content. Which sucks. If it's not a bad game or a popular game, they're not going to watch. Yeah, that's unfortunate on Twitch. I've noticed that. You know, it's... I don't know. Sometimes I just want to play a good game, man. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> What's a game you, like... Are there any games you want to play on stream but you can't? The, the Andrew and Charlie? No, I usually just play pretty yeah, much I whatever I'm feeling. I, I don't really look at view counts. I just play what I want. Mm. Yeah, I don't look either. People just started pointing it out to me like, Kai, you're playing something too good. This can't fly. <laughs> give, us more, give us more Among Us, Kaya. Come on, that's the only <laughs> game to play. <laughs> is Among yeah, Us still a thing? Want. No, yeah. no one really it plays is. Among Us anymore. Well, the oh. memes are, right? I keep uh, seeing the fucking memes know. everywhere. Yeah, the meme is the current hot topic. Seeing fucking Among Us everywhere and going, ha, Among Us, uh, hey, the ho, I'm funny. What's the I meme don't that, think uh, anyone does that. Do they do, man. No, I, I'm with Andrew. I see that in fucking replies to shit is uh, Among Us with some random yeah. JPEG. And it's they genuinely think it's fucking funny, too. Well, I don't get what is it. Fucking thing. Is it just the word Among Us? I don't know. Yeah. The whole uh, yeah. meme is you find something that looks like one of the crew members and you just say, Oh, Homocus. Oh, I can't believe it. Look. Oh, shit. Oh, my <laughs> God. And that's that's the whole meme. And it's very, very funny. Does it, it's the first maybe, time I've heard of that. I, I, I don't, don't believe you use Twitter for more than five minutes. You've seen it. I've literally never seen anyone. All I ever see is people shitting on Among Us now. S speaking of... Uh memes though jackson you told me that before the show you watched the coney 2012 documentary <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i just wanted I to figure that is a i wanted to figure out what happened to him because i was thinking about it the last week that has got to be like that took the world by storm for like all of a week and yeah. then it just yeah. faded mm -hmm. from obscure it it disappeared and I, I really wanted to figure out what happened to coney like did the government get him did the ugandan military no. track him down and kill him what, did he was that, was that even a real thing? I thought I remembered that being like a big scam. No, no, it was an act. Well, I, well, I can't speak to the legitimacy oh, of Invisible Children, a, which is like yeah, charity it started as these guys trying to sell. What was it again? Were they selling supply packs or some shit? Yeah, yeah. So they sent out little care packages to people with like a Coney 2012 shirt and a bracelet or whatever, and they said that the money that they get from that then goes towards like funding Ugandan. Uh, awareness or whatever which is weird because i think he... the ugandans know about coney <laughs> <laughs> i think they know about the warlord operating in their country they don't necessarily Do they know that awareness. the ceo then ended up jerking off naked in the streets really he, were, he wasn't he jerking off that? no I, I didn't know any of this shit yeah he had a mental breakdown stripped of all his clothes and walked down california just naked <laughs> Yeah, I think it was San Francisco. Um, yeah. He, he, yeah. If he I made millions and millions of dollars in, in a single week, I'd also f probably flip the fuck out and just shit in my hand and toss it at people like a monkey on top of a burning car. Like, it's got to be crazy just scamming the whole planet like that. You had young people spamming fucking Coney 2012 under every single video like they're going to save the children. I remember on Reddit, it was massive. That's what I really remember it. it on Reddit, Coney 2012 was fucking everywhere. Well, no, the, the entire internet. It, it was like, it got a hundred million views in like the video. first two days. It was massive. 
What was um, Coney? What is his full name? What is Mr. Coney's Joseph Christian Coney. name? So what's going on with it since you just watched the documentary? Yeah, so I, ju- I, well, I wanted to just uh, catch myself up to date on all the you know, stuff that happened. Wanted to figure out what happened back in 2012. Um, so Jason Russell, the guy, he basically just had a mental breakdown, stripped naked in uh, San Francisco and started doing calisthenics on the sidewalk, <laughs> spreading his anus towards anyone that would look. <laughs> and so he got arrested and that's bas- it basically fizzled out from there. There were like organiza- uh, not organizations, what do, you, what do you call them? Like protests or whatever set up around the country and around the world, but like no one showed up to them. Um, so it didn't really succeed on that front. And then it just kind of petered out and no one followed through with Coney. And so he's still <laughs> still reading. He's still taking child yeah, slaves. he's still at large. Apparently, no, his army has shrunk to 100 soldiers. And both the United States and the Uganda, and Uganda ended the hunt for Coney and the LRA, believing that they were no longer a significant security risk. We did it. Hey, we did. Yeah, fuck yeah. Read it. But it's Only a, he, he just gets away with it, basically. He he was a warlord, <laughs> yeah. a significant warlord, and, and he killed and mutilated children for, you know, a significant amount of time. <laughs> and he just gets away <laughs> with it just because it's not the meme yeah, at the moment. But, you know, just cultural differences. If you yeah, says he's I no guess. longer a threat, I believe them. One of the most interesting things about it was in the height of the, um, the meme, the Coney 2012, you know, event... The head of the ICCC or whatever it's called, the International Court System, uh, was creating some kind of plan to trick Coney into letting him, like giving himself up to the to the government. And <laughs> the way in which he did it was he was he was reaching out to Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt, and he wanted to fly them out there to the edge of the forest that Coney was said to inhabit, and like invite him to a, a like a restaurant dinner with Angelina Jolie. And Angelina <laughs> Jolie was replying to his emails and shit, and, and she was interested until she wasn't and then it didn't go ahead but there, were, there there's a timeline where that happened where Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt lured Coney out and that's how he was brought to justice that would have been incredible that would have been absolutely fucking incredible yeah. <laughs> would you have I done that? rich people <laughs> dinner with a warlord yeah I would have fucking vlogged it absolutely man take him down yeah, be fun. As, long, as, long, yeah. as long as there's security you know Hire some bodyguards and shit so they don't fucking kidnap you and mutilate you. It does you. sound like such a cheap movie plot. I think that should be made into a movie. Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie take down Coney. It'd be incredible. <laughs> that would be pretty fucking yeah, like incredible. A, and Coney can play Coney in the, in, the, in the movie and that's how we catch him. We get him to fly out for the movie roll. <laughs> it sounds like an Ocean's set. Eleven plot. Yeah, it does. Maybe we can have a sequel. With Coney. I mean, he is still alive. Maybe he wants to roll. Especially now that he's apparently retired. He could use the money. So who's the current Coney? <laughs> Who is he elected as his successor? As in... What do you mean current Coney? Yeah, like as in a like current the, yeah, semi-unknown the current, warlord? Well, yeah. Like the, the biggest warlord uh, in, in the world at the moment. Someone that we can bring down. Yeah, who can we talk I mean, Ginny the Pooh, but we're not getting close to that motherfucker. How about let's start small, Jackson. Set your sights a little lower, maybe some Ugandan. So you're saying Coney again? <laughs> we take down <laughs> <laughs> Coney for real this time? Now that he's crippled and insignificant. I mean, he only has 100 men. We have way more fans than that guy. Should we set oh. up? You know, we wanted to take over the Pitcairn Islands. Yeah, maybe we should yeah, take yeah. over Uganda instead. Ooh, what a plan. So oh, we send out the people in our audience over to fight a Ugandan war. That's our goal. <laughs> I mean, we can be there as, you know, in, in the back. Uh, I'm busy <laughs> that weekend. <laughs> we, we'll, we'll have dinner with Angelina Jolie and our fans can fight in the jungles. How about that? <laughs> I bet there's yeah. way more than 100 people in our audience that own guns. So we should be fine. All that's really needed is money for plane tickets, but we can go fund that, probably. Do you think Coney... Well, I was going to ask, do you think Coney watches the show? Maybe we could 
call out to him net right now and make him stop his pillaging, but I don't think that'll work. I don't think they have the appropriate communications over there. Um, so I'll change my question. Do you guys think there's anyone significant or powerful that listens to the show? That is also evil? Yeah, like, mm-hmm. be a little more specific. No, just in general. Do you think there's anyone significant and powerful, like someone someone who's a CEO of a company or a warlord or something like that? I could see in Kinda a very, very deep universe dive, maybe if the stars aligned, Elon Musk has checked out the show. Mm. He seems like the kind and of guy to just like, go on like Spotify and listen to trendy podcasts. Yeah, you know, maybe his son showed him, maybe, you know. Other than that, no. Prove no. us wrong. Yeah, who's the most oh, powerful yes, person cool. listening to this podcast right yeah. now? Every one of our fans, go go somewhere, whether the subreddit or the comments Out or whatever, and just post how much money you make with proof. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see who truly is the most wealthy listener of our show. And uh, we can't trust yeah. that. We can't trust that unless they send us the money. Not... Also, Notch doesn't Better count. Play. I'm pretty sure that that poor man just listened to a couple of episodes, maybe, maybe like one, maybe probably just the one that he was on. Yeah, I suppose he we're is talking the most about, powerful though that we've yeah. ever had. Yeah, oh, but we're talking about powerful, confirmed by a long shot. Yeah, but I mean, somebody who's listening long term, not just once off. Yeah. No, I don't think anyone powerful has been listening to us constantly. I think of. there's probably somebody out there. <laughs> there's probably powerful people listening to us that aren't necessarily famous, like some guy who's a billionaire and he's just like, yep, love the show. <laughs> All right, time to get in my Veyron and drive away. I like that idea that there's just this fucking secret billionaire amongst us in the comments section, like bitching about something, maybe. I did no <laughs> did research on this topic. That one, uh... This reminds me, th- did we talk about that billionaire that died during a dick enlargement surgery? That's the first <laughs> I've heard of that. <laughs> what, what? We haven't? What the fuck? I thought that was the, would be the first thing I'd bring up. Um, well, billionaire diamond trader reportedly dies during penis enlargement procedure. How large was it before um, he died? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not telling us. Damn it. He was apparently very, very... Um, Self-conscious, the diamond trader always focused on his appearance and how others perceived him, according to one friend. He oh, reportedly no. checked his bank account multiple times a day just to make himself feel better. <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah. How old was he? So apparently he was just this mega mind, absolute mega talented diamond trader and one of the biggest experts in valuing diamonds. He um he went to France, I think, to a special oh yeah, clinic. A billionaire diamond trader went to an upscale medical clinic in Paris for a penis enlargement and wound up dead. The victim of a heart you? attack, which reportedly oh. struck while he was under the knife. So it wasn't so the cause inject- of the penis enlargement? No, well, it was. Oh, because of the surgery, I yeah. mean. It is. Uh, reportedly, they injected something into his penis and then he died of the heart attack. <laughs> Maybe they should have checked his, uh, I don't know, his allergies before. What if someone still care if you're a billionaire? Why do you still care about your dick? Who gives a shit? You can have any woman on earth. It's insecurity. It's just insecurity. Does no one one find this weird though that he died from a dick, uh, you know, a dick surgery? This almost feels like an assassination, like a rival. So the doctor, the doctor was like, "I'll show you for having so much money." Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, he might have been trading diamonds too, though, Andrew. Oh. Uh, or maybe so, the doctor was left so in his inheritance. It was like it was like a billionaire from another rival cartel, and like he snuck into the hospital and knocked the doctor out and put his scrubs on, and they were like, "Ah, oh, Doctor Manchez, you're ready for surgery." And he's like, "Yes, yes, I am." <laughs> yeah, rubbing his hands together. <laughs> he's just like lopping his dick this. off with a scalpel, and he's like, "Trust me, this is the way to do it." <laughs> <laughs> That's the most embarrassing way to fucking die. Jesus Christ. I hope when I die, it's going to be something super duper sad and like depressing and something that's not my fault. So nobody can mock me for it. Did like, he already I pay? I, get hit by I, a assume, fucking meteor. I assume he already paid for the surgery, right? Well, well he course, may. He yeah, probably yeah. he probably got a huge discount on it by using honey. Mm. That's true. Yeah. If you're 
shopping online for anything. Maybe it is dick enhancement surgery. Like diamonds. Diamonds. Maybe it's maybe it's a disguise to sneak into the hospital to take out your greatest enemies. It could be anything. You're probably going to be shopping online because most people do their shopping online now. And thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best ones directly to your cart. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite websites, whether it be look how rich I am compared to everyone else.com or I need a doctor disguise because you know exactly why I need it.gov. And you're think, oh, how do I know I'm getting the best deal on this? How do I know if I can if there's a coupon or not? Well, you just got to use Honey, click their little drop down and hit apply coupons. And that's it. Honey's going to scour the internet finding the best coupons that they can for you. Honey has saved all four of us money on different things. I mean, we all use Amazon. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. They are a cultural, monolithic, economic juggernaut for a reason. And the amount of times that they've been on Amazon and just been like, hey, man, here's a dollar off. I can't even count. And some of you naysayers out there might be like, oh, a dollar, who cares? It adds up. Eventually, you're getting stuff for free thanks to all those savings. If you don't already have honey, you could be straight out missing on these free savings. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. And just by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting our very solid podcast. Get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash official. That's joinhoney.com slash official. It's free. Hooray! Thank you, honey. Very nice. Hooray. Oh, you're welcome, Kaya. Don't mention it, sweetie. Oh. Yeah. That made me so, a little uncomfortable, but in a good way. <laughs> so last week, I brought up a topic that I don't think we expounded on in uh, the way I was going with it. I talked about, like, scams and how Charlie got ripped off at the carnival. Uh, yeah, Jackson and Kaya, I don't <laughs> think... I don't think you guys ever mentioned if you've ever been scammed or any stories like that. Nope. Yeah, I think scammed Jackson scammed has absolutely been scammed multiple <laughs> times. He's fucking scammed me into a friendship. There's Jackson no just doesn't know it. He's never realized when he's been scammed. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. Wait, if I've scammed you into a friendship, how would I be the one that's been scammed? And I'm clearly adept at scams and could avoid them. That's true. Mm, Checkmate. That's a good point. Mm. I'm a talented scammer. I've never been scammed. He knows a scam when he sees one. Yeah, you can't bullshit a bullshitter. Actually, I I, I want to put this on the record that Charlie scammed me into a friendship. <laughs> oh, <laughs> an, in an interesting spin. <laughs> you can't disprove it. How'd that happen? Uh, yeah, tell, tell us, Jackson. A, how did I scam you? It's a foggy story, but he reached out. He said he was a big fan of my Ghost of Halo documentary. <laughs> And that he <laughs> would like to uh, partake in games on Trine with me. And I said, sure. And then after that, he spun it. He scammed me into being the bad guy for some reason. And I still haven't uncovered why yet. Charlie, it's mm. time to admit it. Uh, the truth I see is coming out finally. Yeah, that sounds like something I would do. There we go. Confirmation. All right, so Jackson never got scammed. Nope. Well, except that. Yeah, yeah, that that one, yeah. Have you been scammed, Kaya? I went to college. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even supposed to be a fucking joke. Like I last, I was cleaning my place the other week, and I, I came across my diploma that I hadn't seen in like eight years or something. I just looked at it like, well, that was a fucking waste of money, wasn't it? Waste of money and time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so this piece of paper. I'm so happy, Kaya, that I have not used my college degree in any facet for the last like five years. I think yeah. about that a lot. Just so fucking fucked up that we still talk every single this this idea that if you don't go to college, you must be some benighted fucking rube redneck piece of shit, ignorant scumbag lowlife. It's like no. There's other ways to make money. Fucking college. I can't even think of a single thing that I learned there that was useful. I scanned Plus, my way through every fucking class. Exactly. If everyone if everyone goes to college, doesn't it at the end of the day devalue the like the whole act of going to college? 
Uh, no, because the idea is like you have to go to college to get a job. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. then, but then yeah, there's a no, whole I... lot of college educated people competing for the same job market. Yeah, there's well, way more the people graduating. Have. So it's devalued. The more people, people graduating, go to university, the... it's devalued. Um, no, it's not that it's devalued. It's just there's way too many people graduating versus the jobs that are available to them. And the other problem is that every fucking job needs to... It's like, it's one of the most common memes in the tech sector that I see people in that sector make on Twitter, for example. They joke about it as how, oh, entry-level programming position must have 10 years of experience and have used these 10 different technologies for at least five years minimum each. It's like, that's not an entry level then. And also college diploma, of course. That's the kind of shit that, of course, then these poor people end up, but poor, I mean, you know, these kids, they end up jobless after going to fucking college. It's an industry. They fucking tell you to go there and buy $500 textbooks for what? So the fucking professor can buy himself a car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is, it is a giant fucking scam. It's a big problem with American culture, too. There's just that whole giant push of, like, you need a college degree to even find those kind of jobs, even though the whole thing is so saturated and difficult. It's like they don't even consider you if you don't have a degree. So you have to do it anyway. Which is fucking stupid. I bet you 10 times out of 10, some 14 year old who's teaching himself how to code and like trolls people online with viruses and shits. He's going to be a better coder than anyone who's, who went to college for it and learned it in college. I mean, it all depends, of course, but it's just the biggest problem in my eyes is the fact that it's almost a requirement to go to and get a college degree when you could be just as qualified as other people self-teaching by this point, thanks to the Internet. Yeah. If it wasn't a requirement, I, I, I also love how, what would be the benefit of going you know, to college? Hold up. Do you guys remember before COVID, before the COVID era, we used to have online colleges already. Now, I, like they, they used to be considered low tier almost scam like you know you just sit down a couple of hours every week and some per like not even a person not even a life teacher uh, on the other end most of the time they just play you slides and videos and then you take an online exam and you have some uh you know what is it called again tele something fuck what do they call those universities what i don't know like what you mean sure telecommunication well, like again, you don't go to a physical university you just go to you know some online college and then all of a sudden you have a law degree from the university of the american samoa or something that no one ever heard of that is on the other end of the fucking planet and now that's what every university does everyone just fucking they're on zoom they're fucking so isolated people are killing themselves and these universities still bill you the same tuition isn't that fucked yeah, up I, I don't understand I why there's not a massive discount on tuition at the moment <laughs> Like, you're not that using the so facilities up. at all. It doesn't make sense. Like, but I thought he, most of the tuition <laughs> fees go towards, like, maintaining, you know, the, the facilities and such. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure they are. Yeah, and not just the fucking Dean. Yeah, I wish. That's yeah, fucked up. Yeah, I, I agree. I to a, people studying on a these lot days. of different levels, I think college is a, a big fucking scam. The only thing college, I think, is really fucking invaluable for is social experience. And you can, oh, yeah. you can, have, right can. Now. You can have social experiences like that outside of college. You absolutely cannot. Uh, I think college is entirely unique in that regard where you're living with new people that you've never met before. You're, con you're literally on your own for your f the first time in your life making your own decisions, your own time. Everything's entirely up to you, whether you succeed or not. I think it is very, very much, like, invaluable for social... I think, but you can still be friends with the college people and still hang out with college people even if that's, you don't attend college. What do you... That's not what I'm saying, though. Like, that there's well, a know. lot more than just hanging out with college people. What are you saying? Like, just being on the grounds and at, at you know... Uh, fraternity. You're literally living with strangers. Uh, like if you're, you can live with strangers anywhere. I, I what? Jackson, Go the environment. If you want. Jackson, the environment is completely attuned for this experience. It's one of the few institutions that's the same group of people in such a massive quantity with the same purpose in the same location for the same thing. And especially you're gonna. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Good luck finding Kinda that many people this, your age. To take. Like, I really don't I don't I don't think that like the uh university experience is that unique 
I think you can absolutely find similar situations outside so, of university. So imagine imagine you're 18 or 19 and you're going into college. Where else and how easily are you going to find literally thousands of people your age that are striving for the same thing in life? Brony con. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think if you're motivated enough, you can find like-minded people and hang out with them. Oh, I'm, you I'm can make friends. friends but but it just, yeah, yeah, it's still different, though. Yeah. How is it different? Like, how, what do you mean how is it different? It's literally thousands of people your own age. There's thousands of different people all around you. That's I can't think of anywhere else you can find that. I just... Hmm. I guess... I guess I just don't see how that's entirely beneficial. Jackson, or, didn't you drop uh, you out? Well, so I'm what? I'm not allowed to <laughs> get some to kind of fucking yeah. argument destroyed. <laughs> yeah, you're the worst <laughs> fucked up. You're the worst kind of. That was so condescending. <laughs> oh, hello, Jackson. Still, you I still went to call one. You have to complete college to understand what the fuck you're saying. <laughs> Uh, he just doesn't get it, yeah, you're Charlie. Just, you're just too dumb, I guess. Yeah. yeah okay. Should have finished college. Yeah, yeah where's your oh, college? He doesn't even have a degree over here. Yeah. God, why didn't we screen you out when we started the podcast? <laughs> yeah, you must have. Because I created the podcast, you son of a bitch. Uh, yeah, but you didn't have 10 it. years of podcasting experience and a degree. Sure. Still don't. Yeah, imagine how much better the podcast could have been if someone that was experienced came up with the idea. <laughs> yeah. From episode one, he'd be like, oh, I've been to college. I know how this works. Let's get started, guys. I remember this from my studies. <laughs> yeah. This was my one-on-one -on -one class. Podcasting college. Yeah, I really need to hang out <laughs> with people and, and just get drunk constantly on fraternities. You don't really even have to do podcast. that. I didn't do that. Well, that's probably a good experience. What? I mean... I, it's only one of the many possible experiences. <laughs> I don't really know what that means, but all right. Yeah. I yeah, just, but you I, can also make it. I, I don't know. I, I think college is just easier for you to meet people who are going to be in the industry <laughs> that you're going to be in. So it's like, you know, networking yeah. sick. No, Not college, really. college is only for two things. It's for getting a degree that you can show companies and for networking so you can have job opportunities. That's really all there is to do there. Everything else is yeah, supplemental, kinda. which is why it's a big experience thing. You can still do both of those things ever, ever elsewhere. But how easy and readily it. available is it, Jackson? Yeah, I would, I would love to cost? know where you... Jackson, right now, if you wanted to, could you find, like, thousands of people your own age and go hang why, out with them why, today? Why? Why would I want to? Well, the, well it's, that's COVID, not the point if you want that's to. It's literally could not you? the point, though. <laughs> You could. I, I didn't joke. I, I watched the documentary on Bronies. As long as you have an interest, you can absolutely hang out with a thousand other people that share the same interest. Well, not just that. I could probably just walk onto a university right now over here and hang out with people at, like, university bars. But, Jackson, such. you're an old man to them now. Oh, man, you're right. Yeah, they don't want anything to do well, with you. Unless you buy them alcohol Jackson's for like the younger ones. True. Well, all right, well, but... Old. But when I was when I was that age back then, uh, a whole three years ago, <laughs> maybe it would have been fine if I walked in there and ha hung out with people. So you're saying the easiest place to find level, people Andrew. your age back then was the university? <laughs> yeah, but you don't need to pay money to to, to be a part oh of that. You Lord. don't need to subscribe to university. All right, we'll go to a bar then. Go to a club. You Jesus, can get go. into a bar if you're in college for a lot of people. For most of the people, actually. Uh, well, that's, that's a cultural. That's a cultural thing. True, that yeah, isn't obviously. Our drinking age is higher. That's true. I could go to. A, hmm. Yeah, I guess you just have to find other book. You know, not books. Sorry, uh, like clubs and hobbies, and just slowly. I mean, uh, most of the socializing over people. here isn't in universities. Well, it kind of is, but also like most of it is at clubs and bars and such. And you can do that from 18. So I guess it is a cultural difference. Mm. Maybe you can only get that over in colleges over in, a, in America. You know what I also hate on the flip side? Like, is when uh, people tell these inspiring stories of these rich people that drop out of university. Like Bill Gates dropped out of Harvard and, you know, look how successful he is now. Yeah, because he was rich to begin with. It's like, I hate those fucking stories. I especially hate it when they write... Uh, biographies 
Like, oh, here's how I became who I am now. Oh, let me guess. Because 99 times out of 100, it starts with having rich parents, doesn't it? They, they always leave that part out. It's like Jeff Bezos started Amazon in his garage. Yeah, with like half a million dollars worth of a loan from his daddy. Can you stop that? That's not a good angle to shit on universities for. He's so It's a bad argument. Kaya. I hate that self-made. They did the same shit with uh, one of the Jenners, Kylie Jenner, whatever Jenner, where oh, they yeah. went, oh, she's the first self-made billionaire. Yeah. Really? Because her parents are billionaires? I don't think you're very self-made in that case, are you? It was kind of she, easy then, wasn't it? She pulled herself up by her own bootstraps and said, I'm making it big, and God damn it, she did it. <laughs> it's like, the, it's kind of a hint that, you know, Bill Gates, he, not all, so... Not only did he go to Harvard to begin with, which is already so, sort of a privilege, you know, that giveaway, but he had the luxury of dropping out of Harvard. <laughs> he figured, ah, I don't even need this. I'm fine. I'll be fine. Self-made my fucking ass. I hate that trope. Well, do you think that um, one of the ways they were able to step stone through their life and get all these advantages was by using bespoke post? Mm, I definitely think Probably. it played a big role. Yeah, I, I seldom can think of a very successful person who hasn't tried the Box of Awesome. I mean, it's a, a collection for guys, and it's guaranteed to upgrade your life. Guys, I was I was digging through some stuff under my sink recently, and I was going, oh, what are some what are some things I've put in here for like a rainy day just to check out? And I I actually got a grooming kit from Bespoke Post, and I went, oh yeah, when I was running low. I was going to break this bad boy open rather than buying some new stuff. And let me tell you, got a little face cleanser in there. Got some mm -hmm. nice, great smelling soap. It was excellent. And I'm thinking, you know, if I bought this a while ago, what amazing and brand new things could they have on there that could just blow my mind and be even better? Maybe they'll have a, a bag with two soaps in it. That'd be crazy. If you want to get started and get an amazing little collection of upgrades for your manly lifestyle. You can take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right box for you. They release new boxes every month across different categories. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or what cancel at any box, time. Andrew? I just described what was in my box. <laughs> <laughs> that that oh, was what shit. I started it with. You mean Do it again. kits? Yeah. Do it I, again. Uh, there was like Sorry. a soap in there and some nice facial cleanser. There was a... Those are what I remember because those are what I started using. Either I way, apologize. I just my cat is making me play fetch, and uh, I'm my brain is divided. Oh, it's my okay. Bad. I'll handle it for you. I'll tell you Sorry. about the amazing offer because the fact is, every box usually contains about forty-five. Sorry, every box usually costs forty-five dollars. But if you look in it, if you crack it open, if you peer into the Ark of the Covenant, you'll go, "My God, there's over seventy dollars worth of stuff in here." And you can get 20% off of your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com. Enter code OFFICIAL at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code OFFICIAL, for 20% off of your first box. They also have boxes for, like, knife making, for, like, making mixed drinks. They have, like, mm. the various scent boxes. They just take interesting things and put them in collections for you. You save a little money all around with promo codes and group grouping them like that. It's great. It's fun. Take a quiz. Who doesn't like boxes and stuff? Yeah. 20% off yeah. boxofawesome.com code official. You know, if you like cool stuff, you'll check it out. If you don't, well, I can't help you. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you, potential person listening to this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Isn't that the nicest feeling when your door rings and you get a package? He's like, oh, I wonder what I got that I wanted like two days ago. This is nice. Yeah. Oh, have I told I you guys about my... Uh, have Go I ahead. told you guys about my attempt to order everything online? Because I hate going to the grocery store and carrying shit back. So I tried... Whatever is non-perishable, I tried to order on Amazon, plus a bunch of other stuff. Like, you know, cans of tuna, uh, I don't know, vegetable oil, all that sort of shit they deliver. It kind of backfired. It worked, but... You guys, I, I don't know why Amazon overpackages everything. Like, I ordered... My my uh, my entire hallway for a while was a cardboard <laughs> fort. My cat had a lot my, of fun. I thought you said my entire hallway was ordered from Amazon. <laughs> I was like, god Cut, damn. I mean, <laughs> no, but, but I had so many fucking boxes, you guys, which is tedious as fuck, because here in Germany, we have to properly recycle them. They all have to... You have to cut them up and put them in the right bin and everything. 
So that took me like a week to just get rid of all the clutter. But there was so many boxes like you order a fucking candle and they like they pad it with bubble wrap and then they pad it with like other carton paper pieces and then they put it in a box and then they put that box in a different box. It's like it's a fucking candle. It's okay if it breaks. I can just melt it back together. You know, it's fine. You don't have to over package a fucking candle. It's not a gyroscope. It's way too uh, excessive. So I fucked myself that way. Yeah, I don't do it. Yeah, maybe you just hate opening boxes. That might be what it is. Well, no, I like it. I just get... I hate getting rid of them. That's the problem. I like opening them. I love opening them because 90% of the time I forget what I order online. So when I open it, it's like a <laughs> yeah. surprise gift for myself. I know. It's like, oh, how did they know? This is just what I wanted. A popcorn maker. Awesome. You, you just open it. Oh, <laughs> shit. I did need batteries. Great. <laughs> Perfect. Hmm. <laughs> 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 Jackson, whip out a topic from the, the questions or the topic hat. Oh, yeah. You wanted to do that last time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got time for that. Good chunk of the show left for that. All right. So uh, now we're going to take there. questions from patrons, I assume. Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. This one's from Matteo Lajubic. No, you just fucked his name up real good. Sorry about that, Master I've Master just, yeah, I'm, Go ahead. I'm sorry, Matty, I don't have the necessarily university qualifications to pronounce your name. I'm not intelligent <laughs> enough. Yeah, I'll yeah, give it to one of my esteemed co-hosts. Yeah, remember, only 75% of this show has a college this. degree. Yeah, what, what is yeah, that? It's pretty embarrassing, actually. Yeah, Jubik? Lubik? I don't know. There we go. Matteo Lubik. And, and he asks, anyway. Kyle, what's your favorite hentai? Specifically, mm. Kyle. <laughs> See, I, I think you're leaning too much into the meme questions, Jackson. Yeah, I'm yeah, literally uh, just taking whatever's there. Like, no, no, filter mostly, that out because that's like half a meme. minute of discussion. Find one that's right, an well, actual we'll have topic. Two questions. You want two topics? If they last ten minutes each, that'd be literally perfect. I think technically the only hentai I know is uh, Fate Zero, that anime, because I know it's based on hentai, right? Yes. It's like where, where uh, you pass on your magical powers to each other by coming in them. That's, That's awesome. all I know. That's is fucking that cool. It's a, That's not the actual story, is it? No, it is, yeah. I read this up. That was a, Because the animation quality is pretty good in that show, at least one of them. I, I don't know. They have like 10 spinoffs now, but I think one of the Fate Zeros, I looked this up, it's based on a light novel i think they're called and in the novel apparently the main character I, i'm blanking on his name the the boy he has to jizz into raider a writer whatever her name is saber sorry saber is yeah. a cop no wait fuck whatever he has to fuck one of the chicks to give her magic powers that's it that's a fucking story there that's my favorite hentai i guess that seems that seems to be like a core theme of a lot of hentais is Man fucks woman, she gains powers, or she her life is benefited in some way beyond just the fucking <laughs> like men are just her the life main is character is, Yeah, the, the main I mean, character is always just such a gift. Or or people want to believe that fucking can cure a lot of things or solve a lot of things. I've that's noticed. porn in general. It's you know, when you watch porn, that's why, you know, one of the many, many downsides of porn is that they teach young boys that the second you touch a woman, she's gonna moan and come. <laughs> They it's usually like, oh, your do. Dick is so big. Ah. Yeah, is that a problem for you, Kaya? I... Yeah, has that never happened? <laughs> no, I've never, I've never put a finger on a girl and immediately ever just melt. Well, that sounds and, like uh, it's your fault. You know, Thirty-minute orgasm. Yeah, I don't have the necessary college degree <laughs> for uh, porn, porn fucking. <laughs> Andrew, what's your favorite hentai? Oh God, how, which to choose? Yeah, we wanted a 10 minute topic. Here we go. Come um, on. <laughs> mm. uh, are we Don't talking like. <laughs> are we talking pre Golden Age or. Yeah. <laughs> you need something to filter it down, Jackson. <laughs> yeah, wait, what? Are you serious? You don't have... How much I'm hentai have you consumed over your trying life? Trying to think of the game I played recently. It's Best. on Steam. Best hentai with a dragon protagonist. <laughs> yes, yes, dragon. Where the, where the man is a bat vampire guy. There. Mm. 
Do I you just find so yourself I, consuming more or less hentai as time goes on, Andrew? Probably less because I'm more okay. involved in other stuff. But I did have a, a day a couple <laughs> of weeks ago where I started watching like bad hentai dubs because those are always fun. Where it's like the, the actors clearly are phonetically reading English. So he's like, I love you so much, Sasuke-san. I'm going to come in you to symbolize my <laughs> penis as love. Oh, she, it's Bible Black. <laughs> well, yeah, one of them. Where, yeah. where she's like, yes, come inside me. I want you to, like, fill me with your desire. <laughs> it's, it's really funny. I'll just slap that shit on while I'm doing other stuff. It's fun. So you... You watch porn while you're doing other stuff? Sometimes, if it's entertaining. So do you actually jack off to hentai at all? No. Oh. Huh. Just fun to watch. It's kind of hard to get aroused when, like, the animation is three frames and the characters yeah. are literally going, Ah, oh, Natsuki, your big tits are so full of milk. It's like, all right, this is, <laughs> this is pretty great. It's literally like, you know, you know, that old joke where it's like, no, I was watching it for the plot. I swear it's I, I'm literally watching it for the plot. It's fucking entertaining. <laughs> it's really funny. Mm. There's that classic one where it's like a, a murder mystery in a mansion and it's like they're twins. And there's the scene where he's showing the cue balls in her ass at the pool table. <laughs> and he's like, this will fill your ass up real good. And like, you remember that? It's like a famous one. I don't remember no, the name. It's called like when one. the clock strikes midnight or some shit. And it's about these twins, and one of them is, like, allegedly murdered. And, like, he's fucking around a pool table, and he's, like, shoving fucking eight balls in her ass. And he's like, yeah, you're gonna shit these out real quick. <laughs> it's great. I, I can't say I'm familiar <laughs> with that really piece. It's really funny. How, how many does he fit in there? Yeah, how many, how many balls does he get? Mm. Does he have to get a whole nother table's worth? I think it was two. Maybe oh, three. Oh, that's not, not impressive. Come no, on. It, it was oh, pretty grounded. Bad, though. It was pretty grounded. Realistic. <laughs> like, like there's a scene where the brother, one of the brothers, is like tied to the wall by his twin brother, and he's like shirtless, and I think he starts pinching his nipples. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, you like when I tweak your nipples, you filthy gay slut. <laughs> like, it's it's just weak. Fun. It's just funny. It's just it sounds like good writing. Yeah, uh, it's Shakespearean, and, if anything. What 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 is the you know, abs you're you're the hentai expert? What is the absolute worst hentai that you've seen then? Um, like ju mm. I, I'm talking like the most degenerative shit. Oh, you, um, Euphoria, no question. What's Euphoria? Euphoria yeah, basically we'll saw the hentai. So like they lock they lock seven women and a man in a white room, and like a person comes on the like the speaker. And they're like, okay, you see that chick over there? You need to put a taser to her nipples or you'll all die. And then, like, they get Jeez. in the next room and they're yeah. like, all right, you see that girl? She's going to shit in this tube and that one has to eat it or you'll all die. <laughs> what the fuck? And it, it's very long and a lot of things happen. Good. You were watching. Is this one of those hentai that you were watching on the side while you do other stuff? This is what. No, this is when I sat down. It's one of those things where it's like shock value. So I was like, all right, let's do it. And I watched like the first couple episodes and I was like, yep, this is pretty fucked. It's six episodes, I think. And I watched Did you like watch half all of kind of funny. No, I only watched a couple and I was like, I can't do this for a while. <laughs> we <laughs> need to go lay down. Yeah, I, I needed a break. <laughs> That, that but, does uh, sound you, horrifying. Yeah, it's it's Did it not turn great. you on at all? No. Yeah. Did you, Did you feel anything? Yeah, come on. Aww. Yeah, I, I was Did fucking erect. I chopped my desk in half with my lightning fast erection watching that one. <laughs> That's but why nah. you couldn't watch anymore. Your oh. erection shut out, broke the monitor. <laughs> you were left crying on the but floor. Nah. So so there's like there's like shock value hentai's that are brought up all the time. Like I'm sure you guys have heard Boku no Pico is like the meme. Yeah. Nope. And it's like I, I that never phases me because I'm like, you haven't seen Euphoria, have you? Euphoria is my no, go to. Wait, wait, like, wait, yeah, wait, this wait. is pretty <laughs> fucked. What's the one you just said? Boku no Boku Pico. No, yeah, that's a huge uh, I heard, one. I heard, it's a actually meme. heard that name the other day. What what is it? It's it's basically like I don't I don't remember the exact specifics on it, but uh, it's like a it's a a guy falls in love with a boy or yeah, something. Pretty much, like, it, it's it's like child porn hentai shit. Yeah. Are there children in Euphoria? Um, it's anime, of course there is. I yeah, haven't seen it, but I know there's kids in there. They're anime, so it's probably that area of like I swear they're eighteen, but they look twelve. I don't remember. I watched it a while ago. It's not very new. I mean, I was gonna judge you, but like, I guess it's like anime, funny, uh, Netflix. 
for you. But <laughs> this is this I, isn't I something the, I do like all the time. It's just one day I went, oh, you know, it'd be funny to watch bad hentai dubs. They have clips of them on YouTube. And then I, after some rabbit hole digging, I was like, oh, euphoria. Hmm. I mean, like, I, you see, I'm not I, watching I it all thought, the time, but sometimes. Yeah, I always, I always just thought you jerked off to hentai and that no. you liked hentai. Not really. Everything I know is hentai. Alive. Hi, Muda. Hey, Muda. Hello. <laughs> Wait. Muda, are you recording nice your own audio? audio? <laughs> what the fuck was that? Join the episode. <laughs> yeah, feel free to join. Yeah. Muda just chimed in for like, those who couldn't hear. Yeah, Perhaps. I have the Discord yeah. recording. Mudahar, aka some ordinary gamer, for those of you listening, is in our Discord call for no reason. Aw. <laughs> Why did he, he come got shy? He muted himself. <laughs> Don't be shy. Come on. Yeah, it's funny that he showed up like as soon as we started talking about hentai. Yeah. Muda, I'm glad you're feeling better, yeah, by the way. suspicious. Did a bad signal go up? He can tell you. What? He's right there. Don't be shy. Come on. Tell me. What's wrong? <laughs> All right, Andrew, you're going to have to tell me. He became very sick. Oh, Appendicitis, I believe, but I don't know. If I'm wrong, someone Aww. could correct me. I hope you're recording audio. Or not. Uh, Andrew. <laughs> no, he's trolling us. <laughs> I think he wanted to pop in and, like, scare us, and we, so we'd be like, who the fuck was that? But his mic's the only other unmuted one in our call. <laughs> oh, um, dude, I, I'm so sorry. I, I really am. I, I thought I was fucking... <laughs> I thought I was muted. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you stick around if you like. Muted. I what really did. did. I, 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 just, I saw the hentai thing, so I just like said it out loud, dude. <laughs> you just got very passionate about hentai for a moment. I really did. I, dude, I haven't slept the whole night, so when I just saw this hentai talk, Aww. I was, you know. When you said degenerate, dude, shit. Mm. All right, well, What's your favorite hentai then? Come on, you gotta have some good stories for us. I, t I told this to everyone, dude. That dropout one just scarred me for life, dude. That one is the wild one. That's my wild card hentai. I don't what know about it? this euphoria stuff. You didn't know the dropout? Andrew, you know dropout. Oh, Come on. oh is that the, the one where... Um, <laughs> That's the one she's... with the x-ray cum shots, dude. That's oh, no, pretty, you reminded me of cool. another good one, though. Shots? What's the one about the girl who gets addicted to heroin? <laughs> Jesus. And, uh, oh, cool. and she she <laughs> like fucks hobos eventually. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's cool. that one's that one's a comic. Metamorphosis. Thank you, Patreon chat. Metamorphosis is another good one. That's pretty. Wait, hold on, up. hold on. That's the one where she's addicted to heroin. That's the one where she's like a boring girl, and she goes to college, and she's like, I want to stand out, and I'm just boring. <laughs> and she meets a boyfriend, and he gets her addicted to heroin, and then starts pimping her out. And uh, eventually, oh, cool. in the end, you you think like, oh, she's gonna have like a big turnaround, like she's gonna everything is gonna be okay. And the ending is she, she just dies. overdoses on heroin and gets oh, her baby God. aborted. <laughs> Wow, that yeah. sounds like a classic. Wait, people yeah. people jerk off to this shit? It's been it's a like meme for literally dream. like a decade, Jackson. It sounds like there's more of an intricate story than there is just porn. Oh, I read that. That's yeah. only a short comic. That's I read that in a fucking afternoon. It's really short. But like, these have been memes for like 10 years now. I don't know how you guys haven't heard of them. Yeah, know. how did we not hear of the aborted heroin addict hentai? That I guess weird. I just do no, more interesting fuck? things on the internet than you guys. I don't know. It's a story oh, for the oh no, you do not. No, you do not. <laughs> Listen, man, I think I think fucking you're patting himself on the back. Yeah, you're, you're, your threshold of fucked up porn is just way higher than everyone else. Get out of here. I think I'm just numb. I'm I'm probably just super jaded by this. Andrew, point. I have a. I have an eight-hour recording of me and my friends drunkenly trolling people on Plenty of Fish and streaming it to a neo-Nazi website. Talk oh, that's that. just mean. That is fun. <laughs> wow. It is not mean, trust me. You streamed eight <laughs> hours to a Nazi website? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this requires yeah, some that, backstory. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, you got Jackson me. Jackson knows, I've shown Jackson Ooh. a video. I, uh, unfortunately, it's all <laughs> video content, so I can't really take clips. But, so here's the deal. All right. We, you guys... Uh, yeah, I, I can say it. Our moderator, Brady, hasn't had the best of luck with the ladies, so uh, we decided we g were going to make him some dating profiles on, like, Plenty of Fish and Farmers Only, Christian Mingle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, people like him. Those kind of sites. 
So it started out the ones as with a the genuine bots on effort. Them? No, there's real people. All, uh, yeah, most sites. Bullshit! Have bots, I, but never got, I never get so... any match on those, dude. Oh, bro! I never get so, a match. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you guys know that Twitch is the, you know, the hub for game streaming, right? But did you know that Plenty of Fish has a monopoly on white trash streamers? It's these bitches, these fat Wait, you can stream streaming themselves. That? Yes, we had no idea. And they get so many viewers. Like some Yo, bitch who has her camera do this. Plenty of obscuring fish. half her face. Yeah. And she will have a thousand people watching, a thousand men simping for her in the live chat. Wait, how does so we subs started work? talking. Is it like Plenty of Fish Prime or something, where you can sub to someone for five dollars yeah. a month? You so can they buy actually items. do make bank you, from this. They have their own. They have everything, just like Twitch. They have their own bit system, except they call it like I don't know bits and no, they call it like pizzas or something. I don't know. So but, who's 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 what like kind of ninja? money laundering operation is this? They call it pizza. I have no idea. <laughs> But Is so like Jackson has seen him, seen it. I, I sent him a, so one time I record, we recorded for eight hours, but the video file got corrupted because it was so big, but I managed to salvage one clip from it. I showed Jackson. It was this trashy lady yeah. screaming at her children to shut the fuck up. And then she was yelling about how she fucked three men off of plenty of fish. And that's where she got the children. And she, uh, she called me a goat fucker and said that I have a brown <laughs> dick and I fuck my sister. Jesus. If you guys want, we can put this up yeah. on our Patreon as a video, maybe. It's fucking hysterical. Yeah, anyway. It was pretty bad. So, <clears throat> once in a while we do this. We just go on Plenty of Fish and treat it like a video game and we troll these fucking people. They will get mad at fucking everything, too. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, you can... Whatever. Like, anything. You can ask them a normal fucking question and they'll be like, what do you mean? What do you mean, how am I? What's that supposed to mean? And then, <laughs> so two problems that I can't stream this on Twitch is they all have fucking music playing at the back. They oh, all are playing on music on their something. phones. No, yeah. well, so that's an option. But what happened is, okay, I decided, you know what? I don't want to get my Twitch channel nuked because of this. I, I was asking for recommendations of where could we stream this? Maybe Discord, maybe some other site and some of you were recommended a website called bitwave.tv now i didn't know at the time that bitwave.tv is a neo-nazi website no oh my god <laughs> that houses the most racist scum on the planet that just spammed gas the you know slur i don't want to say it on our podcast but you know gas the blanks over and over in our chat here i'll put some screenshots from it in our patreon what chat. the fuck bro <laughs> This is the attitude that I got for the first time in my life. I actually felt some racism on the internet. I was like, what's, mm. what's with the uh, what's with the Scantron card in this screenshot? Though I don't really get that. Scantron the, card? Yeah, no, like oh, the that's supposed to be a swastika. The, well, that's a really shitty fucking swastika. What the you fuck? You have to look at it zero out of ten. Oh, for real? Oh, yeah. I oh, see it. now I, yeah, I see it now. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of cut off because the chat was too slim. But here, they called me a. Oh, they called me so many names. And they were really, <laughs> really said, mad at us. You sound genuinely hurt, Kaya. <laughs> no, it, it was just so... I mean, it was fucking hysterical, but it, it was so baffling to see... I think they got mad at us because the people we troll on Plenty of Fish were white people. And they so they constantly just told us to get the fuck out that we're probably Joe Biden voters, all of us. The vaping is for faggots. Kill yourself. You people gotta get gassed. Uh, they, they insulted my gay friends, called them a pedophile. It's it was a wild ride. I kind of want to do it again, but yeah. So that is a lot of fun, man. If you guys want, I can upload some of our uh, exploits as a Patreon exclusive content. Dude, that's because really, I can't really play plenty clips. of fish nowadays, man. I wow. thought it was bots, yes. dude. This is like this is a pretty epic website. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna make well, it. Wait, no, it, sa now. it sounds like it sounds like all this uh, racist shit that he's just posted was from uh, a different Bit wave site, or right? something. Oh, that, right? Yeah, that's from. That's from Bitswave. That is not Plenty of Fish. On Plenty of Fish, they have moderators. They All these women, they have their simps patrol the chats. And not just women, by the way. So I say white trash, but that's not really fair. There's all sorts of trash on the website. You have white trash, black trash, Asian trash. Turns out that being a hick kind of is transcends all racial barriers. And so they're all just there either yelling at their kids, getting super fucking high or drunk on moonshine, playing some weird copyrighted rap on their phones, yelling loudly, twerking sometimes on camera and just getting mad at people. And it's the best fucking thing. It's so amusing. And they don't even use it as a dating platform. Like we constantly ask them, hey, so, uh, you know, hey, how, how's it going, beauty? And she'll immediately go, well, I'm married. 
<laughs> Why are you on plenty of fish? What is going on here? One of them. <laughs> my one favorite uh, segment was one of the girls called her boyfriend on us. She took she called she took up her phone and she called her boyfriend because she thought Brady was a pedophile. And we we're just trolling her. We we're going, I'm not a pedophile. I'm a minor attracted person. It's normal in France. They don't even have age of consent laws. So she called her fucking boyfriend to call kick us out of the chat. <laughs> Damn. Was he hardcore? Did he sound cool? No, we couldn't hear him. She just, she called him like, yeah, there is a pedophile in my chat. Yeah, he says he's an MAP. Hey, yeah, what he's the fuck in was here. he going to do yeah. to you yeah. in the chat? Was he going to like fucking... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why she called her boyfriend to kick us out of the chat instead of just doing it herself. Just she had the bend. phone in her hand. <laughs> Was he going to come in and smash the monitor thinking he was going to get a one-up on him? <laughs> <laughs> he breaks Calling the computer. A, now, <laughs> now Kaya, beat us up or something? Kaya, when hmm. you did all this, did you make sure to protect who you were with ExpressVPN? Yeah. It's very important. Kaya. I always stream through ExpressVPN, especially if I'm using neo-Nazi websites. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love ExpressVPN. That stuff really saves my ass. If you're on the internet looking at some less than savory content, or maybe you just want to keep your privacy and data secure, you're going to want to try ExpressVPN. There's also the fact that Netflix hides thousands of shows and movies based on your location, and then it's just going to increase prices on you. Hey, pay more money for less content. Well, hey, if you're uh, throwing on a little bit of Express VPN onto all your devices, well, you're not going to be getting less content. You're going to be getting that entire Netflix library. You can also use Express VPN to control which country you're in. So you can be like, oh, you know, I, I don't feel like being in Japan today. I think, uh, oh, Great Britain. Let's go for it. They've got over 90 countries to choose from. So anytime you watch the entire gamut of digital streaming content for one country, just switch to another and see what licensing they have there. You can be smart. Stop paying full price for streaming services only to get access to a fraction of the content. You can get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash official. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash official expressvpn.com slash official to learn more about this wonderful program. And Kaya, you are killing mm -hmm. it on music today. God damn. Thank you. I have heard like four yeah, songs that I listen to regularly from you. Bangers. Every one of mm -hmm. them. Good shit. All right, boys. Sorry for crashing you guys. I'm going to head out and get some stuff done. Thank All you right. for the hentai talk. <laughs> of course. Just for the oh, Express for VPN. VPN. Well, Thank you for it. spicing up this episode. <laughs> yeah. Nice hearing from you, man. Yeah, nice hearing from you guys. Take care. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye-bye. I really hope he was recording his own audio, otherwise this episode's gonna sound like shit. Well, well you have his have, audio, uh, right? Yeah, you have his audio. I have, I, I have the whole call. Yeah, but we can just splice that in towards yeah. the end when he showed up. Yeah. I have the Discord. He's gonna be working no one real. listening? Oh, you have, like, <laughs> no, the actual... No, no, no. Andrew's got it. And Andrew's got it. <laughs> All right. That's fine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> where, where, where? Oh, yeah, so if there's interest, I can upload those videos. Um, like I said, the eight hour recording got corrupted, but I have another recording that's six hours. If anybody wants it, I, I can't believe this whole world exists. It's fascinating. It's so fucking crazy. I was, wow. We were blown the fuck away. That's what I mean, though. This started as a wholesome project to get Brady some dates, and uh, immediately we saw <laughs> that tab. Of fish for it. I I, I don't know dating sites. I thought Plenty of Fish was a legitimate website. I don't know, but anyway, it, we it like, used to be. We saw but... that tab at the top that said live. live. And we were yeah. like, live. What does that mean? And turns out, yeah, they have a whole cottage industry for people to stream on there, and and it's big. Apparently, undetected by DMCA because they all play r royalty music. Now, wow. but, but it's crazy. It big? Like, there's a lot of people watching because the chat doesn't seem too active, from what I'm seeing. I. Yeah, the pictures. chat. So, oh, the chat isn't active because I usually pick the streamers that have low viewers, so they notice us. But there's right. people who who are streaming to like seven thousand people. If it's a pretty girl, she'll get like seven thousand viewers. Like, I don't get those fucking numbers. Wow. And you're the prettiest girl I know, Kaya. Yeah, I can't. I know. That. It did. It did kind of do a number on my self confidence. It's but yeah, so that was strange. fucking fun. I, I invite you guys. I already invited Jackson, but because of uh, the time zones, it's, it doesn't really line up. But it's a lot of fun, man. I don't think I'll come to the neo-Nazi website that you seem to enjoy so much.
You don't have to come to it. It was just as a thing so people in my <laughs> Discord could watch us. But yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I didn't know that that's <laughs> what was going to happen in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what the fuck? What what is it again? Bit uh bitwave.tv. I've never even heard of that before. Yeah, Bit yeah me neither. Wave TV. I think it's probably new. It's crazy. It's like I see this on all of these kinds of websites. The, like the tagline is an open platform live streaming service for creators to freely express themselves. A hundred percent of the time, it just leads to racism. Yeah, like, I don't <laughs> Isn't that the, 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 the only though? people? <laughs> What the fuck no, but the because one? they get banned off of everywhere else, like yeah, they have nowhere else to go, right? What every fucking racist gets banned off of Twitch, even the people that aren't racist get immediately banned. So they go to fucking Bitwave.tv, like a life raft, and immediately the platform turns into a fucking Nazi hub. The same thing happened with uh, Gab. The That's thing the one that I wanted to compete Gab. with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gab. Yeah, they tried to compete with like Twitter, and for a while it was normal. But then within like weeks, or even I think mere days, it turned into this thing where the trending tab was just people denying the round Earth. It got so bad that they had to remove the trending tab because it turns out that those were the only people who hadn't been banned off of every other platform. So it's like these platforms self-filter almost the bottom of the barrel scum. That's our demographic, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Let's see what's popping on her. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah, I just didn't know that kind of shit existed. Well, I, I knew racism existed, obviously, <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know like there was this whole sub community of people on plenty of fish and such. But these, they're not on plenty of fish, Jackson. And they. No, no, no. I mean, I, what I mean is, like, there's this whole um, different ecosystem of of live streaming networks. I always just thought it was yeah. know, just Twitch. Oh. Uh, well, I, I always knew there was like right. other ones, but I didn't know it was going to be like fucking neo-Nazi yeah. Twitch or whatever <laughs> the fuck it is. There's a ton of foreign ones as well. Like, there's a giant one exclusive to China. There's one exclusive to Japan. But I don't know. I guess racism is universal find it everywhere <laughs> what, a, what a beautiful message yeah thank you earth <laughs> I, I can finally claim no, lifting. that i've been discriminated against on the internet and it was fucking hysterical <laughs> i'd wager right. actually kai that more people have been racist to you than they've ever been to any of us three. Oh, a hundred percent yeah mm -hmm. well i i know not if you i guess maybe if you count turkish jokes but i don't count those as racism i know those aren't like meant Genuinely, because they're not jokes. Oh. Oh. Uh, Andrew believes in them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <but> yeah. <laughs> I believe in them. Fuck, <laughs> it's like I don't really take those to art. I know our audience isn't racist or anything. I've never felt that from our audience. This was genuinely the first time that I've been on the internet. I've been on the internet for like well over a decade too, and this was the first time where I went, "Wow, these guys actually don't like me because of who I am." It's interesting <laughs> because of my skin color. <laughs> It's an eye-opening this... moment for Kaya. Wow, this this is this is racism. Yeah, is this, <laughs> this, is this the first time you felt like the genuine <laughs> hatred, not like in a ribbing or a joking sense or an internet sense? Like these people sense. want you to die for no reason. Yeah, like the first time you are ever confronted with like, oh my god, they actually like genuinely hate me. <laughs> no, it's not for some hate in general. I mean, we all get hate comments, you know, the, you know that feeling. But this was, I guess, one of the very few times if in recent memory, at least, like, that I can remember where they hated me because I was Turkish. They hated my friend because he was gay. They hated my other friend because she's a girl. That was genuinely, like, the first occurrence of this that I can remember. It was fucking funny. I think it's more sad than anything, yeah. if I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like you have Stockholm Syndrome almost. Yeah. No. No. I just need to convince you have a sense cool. of humor. I mean, we're we're absolutely blasted out of our minds. We're like blackout drunk, trolling some hick who's yelling at her children, telling her to stop yelling at her children. And on the side, I, I glance to the side, and it's just a barrage of n words. Kill yourself, saying that my friend must be a fucking pedophile who voted for Joe Biden because he had like girly uh, nail polish on. <laughs> it's like <laughs> so it's fu it's funny because they're pathetic, basically. <laughs> yeah, I mean these just they exist. I don't know. This is... <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, don't you guys do that? Every once in a while you go to Stormfront and you just laugh at them, at all the fucking shit they believe. It's just like the incels, right? I mean, if I had a chat full of incels just yelling at me, 
it would be just as funny. Yeah, I guess. I don't really search it out, though. Yeah, no. Like, if it pops up on Twitter, it's good to laugh at, but I never go out of my way to find those kind of pathetic That's the, people. No, th that is why I believe this to be an act of providence. We didn't seek out either of these things. We didn't seek that out the plenty true. of fish yeah, cottage industry. We just happened to stumble into it like, what the fuck is this? And the same with the Nazi website. I just thought it was a little, you know, streaming site. I didn't expect it to be a clan rally. So accidentally discovered a lot of lols. We're happy for you, man. Are you going to be like a regular streamer on there just to make fun of them, though? Oh, uh, so like I said, I... Me and my buddies, we call this family game night. We, uh, we like Friday night. or the weekends. <laughs> we, yeah, we get shit faced <laughs> and we either binge TLC shows or we play, you know, video games or we now the, the Plenty of Fish thing is a recent development. Now we play Plenty of Fish. Oh, I just, I was invited. alerted. I was alerted to hmm. someone saying Kaya also got like the second top stream on the website. So you took over this racist <laughs> oh, website nice. for a bit. <laughs> Good Good work. Shit, I don't know if that's yeah. true, but that would be fucking hysterical. Well, How many viewers, viewers did you pull on get? Yeah. Not many. I think I just had like 40, but maybe by that <laughs> site's standards, that's a lot. Oh, yeah. I mean, maybe. Um, Let me see. I want to uh, real quick before we wrap. Oh, yeah. Most of them got like 17 viewers. Holy shit. We were the biggest shit on there. Fuck, oh, we must huge. be featured on the front page. That is awesome. Oh, I'm definitely Fuck, going back. Yeah. I'm taking over that place. The more they hate me, the more I'm going to stream there. Fuck you. I'm taking over your fucking website. <laughs> that, is, that is pretty powerful. I like that. Yeah, that is I'm going to invade move. you with my dirty Turkish jeans. With my <laughs> mud blood. All right. Well, don't self-flagellate. <laughs> You're better than that. Yeah, come on. Rise above it, Kaya. I, I, it doesn't rolls off my back. I don't care. It's fucking funny if they get if I can rile up Nazis. Why would I stop? That's fucking funny. Yeah, but you don't have to be racist towards yourself <laughs> in the process. <laughs> <laughs> See how dumb you guys sound when you say these things to me. <laughs> uh, call uh, me an Edward again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough for this week. Um, uh, that's uh, that's a right. happy note to end on. <laughs> thank Dokey you everyone dope. for listening to this week's episode we've got a patreon patreon.com mm -hmm. slash the official podcast bonus episode tune Watch in for that uh, exclusive content now we just have to can I send Danny the video so he can bleep out Brady's address no, the city you can probably do that you can ask Danny I don't know uh, it's, it's up to All you alright right. thanks everyone slave, if that's what you're asking uh, yeah, thank, thank you everyone Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Thanks, right. everyone. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.